Hi, guys. On this episode, we meet with the head of Six Monkey Martial Arts School. He has been immersed in the elusive style of Tai Xing Kung Fu, also known as Monkey Style Kung Fu, for over a decade and now has hundreds of students on an international scale through his online academy. Always willing to share his art as a means to keep it alive and thriving is Sifu Anthony Barber. How are you doing today, sir? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing quite all right. I have to thank you very much for taking the time to come and speak with me. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Um, how did you get started in the martial arts? So I actually got started in martial arts when I was eight years old. Um, I used to watch a lot of like Kung Fu movies, you know, Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. And I always thought it was really cool, you know, the, the mastery of skill that he protruded. So I started it when I was eight years old. I got involved in Taekwondo, um, did that until I was about maybe 10 years old. Uh, got up to a blue belt for what it was worth. Then I started learning a Timiru karate. Um, I got, got my black belt in that when I was 15 years old. Um, then I kind of stopped, did some boxing, did different things. But then I met my Sifu, Sifu Asang, when I was 18 years old. Um, even though I've been practicing martial arts for, you know, majority of my life at that point, I was a very skinny individual. I was 145 pounds soaking wet. I can do a push up to save my life. Um, and I met my seafood because I was living in a very rough area. There was a lot of fights. I've been cut and stabbed and stuff, you know, through different altercations. And I wanted to learn more practical fighting, uh, the Taekwondo and the boxing and my Muay Thai and things I've done before didn't quite work the way I wanted it to in, in real life application. So my, I met my seafood in a, a library. And I uh, just, only thing I knew about him was that he was some short little guy that was kicking everybody's butt and nobody, everyone was kind of afraid of him. So for the first year, he started training me. All we did was exercise. I didn't know what style I was learning. I didn't know really what his lineage was. I didn't know what lineage was at that point. Um, our, our very first workout was half a mile of walking lunges with squats at every light pole, um, just to start working on the, the monkey kung fu legs at that point. And it was miserable, <laughs> you know, for someone who had never worked out before. Uh, it was definitely one way to get interest into like a very hard and tough style of martial arts. I trained with him from 2010 until he passed in 2017. Um, and I've been carrying the art on since 2014 when he granted me black sash and uh, to be rank of Sifu. Since then, we've opened Six Monkey Martial Arts. It started in 2014 uh, when I got my black sash and then really come to full, to full you know, fruition until about 2021 after COVID and everything. We wanted to expand our presence and really keep the art alive because there wasn't a lot of practical martial arts out there as far as like kung fu styles uh, i did a bunch of mma fighting so i was 16 and th uh, 13 and 3 16 total fights um throughout my you know semi-pro mma career so i had a bad head injury from a work accident so that's how i kind of got started been carrying it on forward it's been a huge blessing in my life i've been very fortunate to meet a lot of great masters through this time okay 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 uh well i you know i just i have do have to ask you this sifu anthony um, I have a friend of mine who actually does Tai Xing Pequar, and mm -hmm. you do Tai Xing. Is there any correlation between those two? There is. There's actually quite a big difference. So I do the way I was founded by a man named Sijo Kaozu, uh, Sijo meaning founder. Uh, he created the system Tai Xing while in prison. He went to prison for killing two guards who were trying to recruit him into the military. Um, and his friend, who was a leader of the Pequar household, prevented him from getting a death sentence and got knocked down to an eight year prison sentence. So while he was in prison, he had visions of Sun Wukong or the monkey King. Um, now Cal Zhu was a grandmaster or master of the art form Tay Tong. It's kind of a dead art form. It's a low to the ground style that uh, works on really low, hard striking and kicking sweeps, really low ground to the ground techniques, but it was very strong and uh, abrasive or aggressive style. Um, when he came out of prison, his friend, uh, Master Ken Guai, Kwai, K-W-A-I, had passed away and he had a son, Ken Tak Hoi, who was the, now the new leader of the family, of the, Pe the Ken family Pequar system or style. So uh, in order to respect his friend who helped him through a very tough time and saved him from a death sentence, he decided to pass on his a new art of Tai Sheng, Tai Sheng meaning great sage or awakening through the void uh, to his his friend's son, uh, Kim Tak Hoi. Kim Tak Hoi now had a very important lineage duty because he now had a dual lineage. He had a lineage of Pequar 
and he had a lineage of Tai Xing. So he decided to combine the arts and make them Tai Xing Pequar. And the way that he would do it is he would teach you the 110 Pequar fist forms, empty hand forms, and then the Pequar weapon sword and uh, straight sword and broad sword forms. Then he would teach you the Tai Xing. And that eventually kind of evolved to kind of combining the two into kind of a whole new system where the system that I teach Tai Xing is original as per the founder, as Ken Takoi originally started teaching it. Your lineage is before uh, Ken Takoi took over. This is before he, he combined the two. Correct. This is it's still under him. My, my Si Gong, Chao Sing Fun learned from Ken Takoi, but it was before he had combined everything together and to make Tai Xing Pequar. Now we still honor the name Tai Xing Pequar just to pay tribute to our elders. But as far as the actual style itself, what we teach is Tai Xing Kung Fu. Okay, okay, all right. So it's, so it's just really more, it's just pure Tai Xing. There's no pick it's wire at all. Pure, pure, pure Tai Xing monkey style. Um, monkey style does have some axe fist that does kind of translate into Pequar, but Pequar is a very long, almost like Shaolin Lohan style form, where Pequar has six different sub, or I'm sorry, Tai Xing has six different sub styles of monkey that each have their own mindset and their own fighting styles, which makes it kind of a whole another realm of fighting. Okay, well, well Tai Xing Pequar probably has less. No, le, le, you have six, they probably have like four or. Or, or yeah, they, they five, focus on five monkeys. They do have a night monkey as well. Chan Sao Chung taught it, um, who was the head of the Tai Xing Pequar school before he passed, I think in 2020, unfortunately. Uh, but he did teach that as well. It just it was a little bit different in the way that it was taught. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So no more of those off, off, <laughs> uh, off the path questions there. Sure. Thank you very much for, 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 for being patient enough to get through them with me. Uh, let's go back to the uh, real second question. So between all the arts that you have studied, right, because you had said Taekwondo, you had done, right, as well as getting in, lo well, long before you got into Tai Xing, um, but what are some similarities or differences between arts that you've practiced or even teach? So what I've kind of noticed, and I've been very blessed, I've had some amazing teachers, uh, my Sifu, Sifu Asang, I trained under Sifu Chong, where I learned Lung Ying, Bak Mei, some Chugar. Um, Wing Chong, Baji Chuan, Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, I trained under quite a few different Sifus and, and boxers and professors throughout my time. And what I've noticed is Tai Xing is a very complete system where because it's a newer system, it wasn't really founded until 1911. Whereas most of the other starts that arts I've studied are much older than that. It has a lot of very, a lot of similarities, but it kind of combines everything together. So it has floating and sinking. It has bridge control. It has long, mid, and short-range fighting. It has the internal aspects of martial arts as far as meditation, qigong, qi development, uh, external heart conditioning, internal conditioning. So it's really um, really a complete system out of all things. And I, I love every seafood that I've trained under and every professor I've trained under, but it's really been a complete system. You know, it has, it has its own meditation, has its own qigong, has its own conditioning, has its own forms, its own striking techniques really not much is borrowed from anything at all. Um, the only thing I've added to the system is just some workout stuff because I train fighters outside of doing this, outside of teaching Tai Xing. But it's really been great. Um, and, you know, the, the, the difference is, I would say, is the mindset. Tai Xing has six unique mindsets. So, like, for example, Tom Monkey has a very long-range mindset. So it's short striking but uses a long guard, where Lost Monkey is very short and fluid, uh, you have Drunken Monkey, or properly known as Monkey Steals Master's Wine, which is a lot more soft and uses more of the internal energy for striking. You have Night Monkey, which doesn't have a form, but has more of the dim mock, you know, striking, using specialty hands to strike pressure points, knowing the uh, meridians, knowing the elemental, the yin and the yang of the body. So there's a lot of uh, deeper levels to Tai Xing, and I think it's been more, it's very, it's more organized and progressive than most of the other starts, parts I've studied. All right, that's good. That's good. So, 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 as you're saying, it's more of a it's a really complete system. So there, so there are many similarities, or 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 you said no to to yeah, no, there's a lot of similarities. Up. Like um, in Lung Ying, you know, they they teach about you know like a lot of uh, what Sifu Chang will teach is about weight distribution and your stances. Tai Xing teaches that, and it's one of the only styles I've ever done that teaches that. Besides the Lung Ying and Bak Mei, which I learned after I did the Tai Xing. But also has like the sink and the float. Um, 
talks about using bridge control and then the different distances. So there's a lot of similarities, especially with the Hakka styles, because Taishing started in the north, like near the Henan province, and then eventually moved to uh, Hong Kong, where a lot of the Hakka styles worked. So I think as Kin Ta Khoi progressed the system, those were kind of added into it. Okay, okay, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. So all of these, uh, even the Hakka elements are included in in, in Taishing as well. That's, that's absolutely awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on, Sifu Barber. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the hardest part of developing one's Kung Fu? So for me, what I think the hardest, because Kung Fu, and one of the many definitions of Kung Fu is accomplishment through hard work, right? And I think the hard work is one thing, doing the hard style training, but doing the same technique over and over and over and always refining it, even when you've reached that black sash level. You know, I can sit here and do Jing Choi 10,000 times and still find a flaw in myself doing it in the mirror. What can I perfect? Kind of taking it to that next level. I think that's the hardest part of Kung Fu because people get bored. They always want to learn the next thing. They always want to learn the secret to Kung Fu. But there really is no secret to Kung Fu. It's, it's doing that hard work, that repetition, doing everything over and over and over again until you finally can master it. And then continuing trying to master what you've already mastered. And being able to teach it and share it and expand on that knowledge because teaching is to learn twice. You know, when I teach things, I'm always learning, you know, okay, well, if I explain it this way, that makes more sense than explaining it in a different way. So let's get on to that next question then. Right? If you could teach the new generation just one thing, whether it be technique or philosophy, what would it be? That's a hard one. Um, I think. If I had to teach a philosophy, it would be it would be kung fu. It would be accomplishment through hard work because you can't really teach discipline. In my opinion, you can't. I can't teach anybody to be disciplined. I can show you the effects of what discipline looks like. I can show you coming to the gym every day and lifting and doing the forms and doing sparring and doing all these uh, things that you need to do to be successful. But you never really learn that discipline from me. You just see what it looks like, what that has come from. So if I could teach a philosophy to anyone, I would teach them Kung Fu, the hard work, the accomplishment that you get through the hard work. That's what I would like to teach them. If I had to teach a technique, I would teach monkey hands. Monkey hands is a reactive training where you punch, I step back, I block, I counter, and then we just kind of have a, a simulation of sparring and fighting where we're doing, doing distance control, reactivity, and then just uh, reaction speed. So that's probably my favorite technique if I could teach anyone. Is there, there's, a, there's a form of sensitivity in that drill as well, no? Yeah, there's sensitivity, there's reaction, there's distance control, there's timing, timing a block, timing a strike, changing the pace with your partner. It's probably my favorite drill. And when I used to fight, it was the drill I would always do right before my fights. I did it all the time anyways, but just to kind of work on, you know, punch comes in, pop, 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 come down low, right? Being able to change those levels, having all those angles, levels, um, distances that I can kind of play with and learning how they work with an actual human being is a great thing to learn. Okay. Okay. All right. No problem. So I, I, lo I love both those answers for philosophy as well as technique. Now um, I'm sorry to go off the beaten path one more time. That's right? okay. Um, you, you have experience in, in, in training fighters, right? You have um, like MMA fighters and so on. Um, mm -hmm. So, how does your martial arts in uh, your, your traditional martial arts uh, teaching uh, background help with coaching? Right? Is, is it two? Is it like two completely different worlds, or um, uh, has, it, has it been able to support one, support the other? It's a, that's a really good question because they really intertwine more than you would think they would. And I'll say this, the, the guys that I train and they're jujitsu guys that do uh, BJJ competitions, they're MMA guys that are trying to work their way up to the big leagues. They're your boxers. I, I train a whole variety of different fighters here at the gym. Um, but one, everyone I deal with is very open-minded. To be a good fighter, you have to be open-minded. And I, having the traditional background of Kung Fu and knowing you know that, that discipline, that hard work, it works very well with these fighters because Kung Fu doesn't just be come for one style or one system it's for everybody and it's for everybody because we all get to experience what that hard work hard work is going to accomplish as long as we apply ourselves the best fighters are always the most open open-minded ones there are some that i'll even teach some monkey kung fu techniques some taishin techniques 
because they want that slight advantage over their opponent because it's not something you would expect or it's not something that uh, they would traditionally train in their in their per- perspective styles or systems. So I think it entwines really, really well because the traditional teachings of, you know, hey, we're going to keep doing this repetition over and over and over until you become proficient at it, Kung Fu, um, works really well with fighters. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a very good answer. Uh, so, sorry to go off the, uh, the, 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 the path right there, sir. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take it to that last question. Someone wants to get in, talk, in contact with you, Sifu. How do they do that? Uh, Six Monkey Martial Arts at iCloud.com, or you can check out our website, sixmonkeymartialarts.com, um, or you can even check out our uh, uniform website, monkeykungfuuniforms.com. That's the best way to reach me. Information for Sifu Anthony Barber as well as sixmonkeymartialarts.com will be in the description below. Also in the description down below will be a link for Fair You Shoes. If you need Fair You Shoes, go ahead and click the link down below. Get the best prices, get the best deals, all at Fair You Shoes. Sifu Barber, thank you very much for being with me. Thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you and hearing your story, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.